Welcome to the Bachara Talks channel. And today we are continuing Zero Trust, continuing our SC100 series. And today's topic, as you see on the screen, is securing identity with Zero Trust. So we are going to talk about how to implement Zero Trust to secure the identity. But before that, we need to understand the few things. For example, if we talk about uh, on-premise scenarios where everything was inside the trusted boundary, uh, but the things like mobile workforce, cloud application, bring your own device, remote work, which actually is the need of today's time leads to more open area for the attackers. Now, data is being accessed outside the corporate network and shared with external collaborators such as partners and vendors. Data is also moving between on-premises and cloud environment for corporate applications. So now organizations can no longer rely on traditional network controls for security because we no longer have the traditional way of working. Hence, control needs to move to where the data is, which is on devices, inside application, or with partners. Ultimately, data is something that we want to secure from the attackers, and data is something that attackers want to get it from us. So <clears throat> if I have to conclude, I'll conclude by saying if we can't hold everything inside the premises, then we need to take the security to them by verifying explicitly, yeah? So <clears throat> here we are talking about identities. Identi identities could be anything which is accessing other resources or applications like users, applications, services, or devices. And in zero trust security model, they function as a powerful, flexible, and granular way to control access to data. Before an identity attempts to access a resource, organization must verify the identity with the strong authentication, ensure access is compliant and typical for that identity, and follow least privilege principle. Once the identity has been verified, we can control the identity's access to resources based on organization's policies, ongoing risk analysis, and other tools. Before most organization, uh, it, it, I'm talking about before zero trust, or when organization trying or planning for zero trust journey, their approach to identity is little problematic, like on-premises identity provider still in use, there is no SSO is present between cloud and on-prem applications and very less visibility into the identity risk. So <clears throat> we could also say this is a problem statement and that's why we have to go on zero trust journey to fix these things. And we are going to fix these things with Azure AD, of course. Azure AD is a wonderful, wonderful uh, tool that Azure provides. And these are some features that Azure AD offers. And these features help us to implement zero trust. Uh, security model, okay? So Azure AD enables strong authentication, a point of integration for endpoint security and RBAC or least privileged access. It's already there in Azure AD. Azure AD's conditional access capabilities based on user identity, environment, device health, and risk verified explicitly at the point of access. A lot of features listed uh, in this slide that we already are familiar with if we are preparing for SC100, right? So <clears throat> let's quickly go through. 
SSO, single sign-on, means being able to access all the application and resources that you need to do business by signing in only once using a single user account. Once signed in, you can access all of the applications you need without being required to authenticate. For example, type a password second time, right? Azure AD extends on-premises Active Directory environment into the cloud, enabling users to use their primary organizational account to sign in not only to their domain joint devices and company resources, but also to all the web and SaaS applications. So it will help you for the hybrid as well. Reverse proxy, Azure AD application proxy lets you publish on-premises applications such as SharePoint sites, Outlook web app, and IS-based uh, applications inside your private network and provide secure access to users outside your network. <clears throat> Azure AD multi-factor authentication. It's a method of authentication that requires the use of more than one verification method and adds a critical second layer of security to user sign-ins and transactions. Azure RBAC is an authorization system built on the ARM that provides fine-grained access management of resources in Azure. Azure AD access and usage reports give you visibility into the uh, integrity and security of your organization's directory. Azure AD device registration is the foundation for device-based conditional access scenarios. When devices register, Azure AD device registration provides the device with an identity that it uses to authenticate the device when a user signs in. Uh, with Azure AD uh, privileged identity management, you can manage, control, and monitor your privileged identities. Azure AD Identity Protection is a security service that provides a consolidated view into risk detection and potential vulnerabilities that affect your organization's identities. Access reviews uh, is something that Azure AD provides to enable organization to efficiently manage group membership, access to enterprise application and privileged role assignment. <clears throat> Features like uh, MFA are a great way to secure your organization, but users often get frustrated with the additional security layer on top of uh, having to remember their password. So passwordless authentication method are more convenient because the password is removed and replaced with something you have plus something you are or something you know. So these are some capabilities that I have wrote down. Maybe there are a few more that I have not included, but these are most often used uh, capabilities of Azure AD, which will help us to implement zero trust. And <clears throat> how are we going to implement the zero trust? Well, there are few uh, objectives that we need to fulfill. So these are the initial objectives that we need to fulfill. Once we are done with the initial objectives, then we are ready to implement additional objectives as well. So <clears throat> what are the objectives we're talking about here? Well, the very first is implement Azure AD as a centralized control plane for the identities because we have already went through the capabilities of Azure AD. That's why we are opting Azure AD as a centralized plane. For example, if you have an hybrid environment, then of course, utilize AD Connect and use the authentication as per your need, maybe pa password hash or pass through or ADFS. Get all the identities in a centralized place to manage. Put Azure AD in the path of every access request. This connects every user and every application or resource through one identity control plane and provides Azure AD with this signal to make the best possible decisions about authentication authorization risks. Integrate all application with Azure AD will give you SSO and make sure you don't have multiple IAM engine, <laughs> right? The first attribute SSO we wrote down in the previous slide, right here. So we are matching those capabilities, utilizing those capabilities and trying to achieve our objective to implement zero trust. That was the first objective. 
Now, once we have the Azure AD everywhere or controlling all the identities, implement multi-factor authentication and block legacy authentication, which is one of the most common attack vectors for malicious actors. Then now identities are managed on a single plane. SO, SSO is implemented with MFA, <clears throat> but people are still moving here and there, right? So we are now ready to implement conditional access. Yes, implement conditional access because now Azure AD is getting all the information which is needed to apply conditions as all the devices, applications, and resources connected to the Azure AD. Just an FYI, if you are using a basic Azure AD MS provides security defaults, which provides basic level of security. However, conditional access will help you to customize the security defaults with more granularity as per your requirements. Then <clears throat> devices, because people are also working, bring your own devices that we talk about at the very beginning, or maybe <clears throat> devices provided by the organization. They are accessing uh, through their own devices or corporate devices from anywhere in the world. So register devices with Azure AD to restrict access from vulnerable or compromised devices like uh, Azure Hybrid Join or Azure AD Join, Intune, only allow access from the compliant devices. We should always have the logging, monitoring and reporting in place, which will give us deep insight and help to make decisions. Azure AD provides machine learning based reports that uh, ident that identity inconsistency access pattern and help us protect our business. Azure AD access and uh, Azure AD access and usage reports gives detailed visibility in the directory, which could help us to determine possible risks. Azure AD have audit logs, sign-in logs, anomaly reports, integrated application reports, error reports, and many more, including activity logs, right? So monitoring, logging, and reporting is very much needed for everything, but here we are talking about zero trust, so we should have all those reporting coming in through the Azure AD. That's why Azure AD is the big part of securing identities through zero trust. So, <clears throat> Till now, we have managed to get the centralized control plane through Azure AD and connected everything with Azure AD. Now Azure AD is getting signals and we are utilizing them to apply conditional access, MFA, and blocking legacy authentication method. These are the initial objectives for the zero trust. Now, it's time to hit the additional objective, right? And additional objectives is, is uh, more towards achieving governance and make it more secure. So <clears throat> we need to ensure the privileged accounts are secure. So we need to utilize the feature PIM, Privileged Identity Management, which, which will help us to apply just in time access, just in a enough administration for the privileged account uh, with the expiration time and, and time period and secure further. We need to restrict the user consent and manage consent requests to ensure no unnecessary exposure occurs to the corporate applications. We need to use entitlement management to create access packages that users can request as they join different teams, projects, and that assigns them access to the associated resources, such as application, SharePoint sites, and group membership. This will not only take care of the access part, but this will also save a lot of time. Because if there is an access package in place, you just need to add that, right? Add the user. Otherwise, user has to go round and round to get all the accesses to work. Use passwordless authentication to reduce the risk of phishing and password attack. Azure already supports Fido 2.0 and passwordless phone sign-ins. While enabling other methods to verify users explicitly, don't ignore weak passwords. 
password spray and breach uh, <clears throat> uh, breach attacks can still happen, right? So we need to enable Azure AD password protection. We need to get more granular session user risk signal with identity protection. Yes. Enable identity protection to get more insights. And with machine learning giving you proper idea about the risk, and you can use that to provide the access or, or deny the access or ask for MFA. <clears throat> Then, of course, enable Defender. Enable multi uh, enable Microsoft Defender for cloud apps integration with identity protection. Microsoft Defender for cloud apps monitors user behavior inside SaaS and modern applications. This informs Azure AD about what happened to the user after they authenticate and receive a token. If the user pattern starts to look suspicious, Example, a user starts to download gigabytes of data from one driver, starts to send spam emails. Then a signal can be fed to Azure AD, notifying it that the user seems to be compromised or high risk. Integration with the Microsoft Defender for identity enables Azure ID to know that a user is indulging in a risky behavior while accessing on-premises non-modern resources like file shares. Enable Microsoft Defender for Endpoint allows you to attest to the health of Windows machines and determine whether they are undergoing a compromise. So here we talked about not only the Microsoft Defender for identities, but for cloud apps and for endpoint as well. Ultimately, these all help helping us to secure identities and sending us signals that we can verify and figure it out whether it's a risky pattern or should allow the access or not. So <clears throat> this is uh, a decent understanding. How can we implement zero trust and secure our identities? And Azure AD is the centralized piece for this implementation because Azure AD provides those capabilities. So I hope this was informative and you guys enjoyed. Let's meet in another video. Till then, take care.